more scholarship opportunities for Grenadians. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the National Report, I am Rakesha St. Louis. 75 Grenadians received scholarship awards Friday during the first ceremony held by the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development for 2018. 68 awards came from the St. George's University in collaboration with the Government of Grenada, and an additional seven awards were presented by the Grenada Houston Association in the United States. Education and Human Resource Development Minister Senator Simon Steele spoke to the value of the awards. Of the 75 awards to be bestowed today, 62 scholarships valued at $21 million are granted by the Government of Grenada in collaboration with St. George's University to study there. Six Island scholarships valued at $1.2 million will be presented, has, have been presented to recent graduates of TAMCC for their outstanding performance in 2016 2017 examinations. And seven awards valued at $9,500 will be presented on behalf of the Grenada Houston Association. I applaud our partners for these awards. St. George's University awarded 23 undergraduate studies awards, eight in nursing, two in the Master's in Public Health program, one in veterinary science, five in pre-medicine, and 23 in medicine. Assistant Dean of Enrollment and Planning, Colin Dow, urged recipients to make the best of the opportunity. The university is extremely proud of its partnership with the government of Grenada. I will argue that unlike other examples of foreign direct investment, which benefit from tax concessions, the people of Grenada do not have to wonder about the benefits of the taxes they are foregoing through this SGU Government of Grenada partnership. The beneficiaries are in this room. Six Island Scholars were also awarded and seven secondary school students received academic assistance awards from the Grenada Houston Association. Providing fair election coverage, this was just one of the many pertinent topics covered during a workshop organized by the Parliamentary Elections Office and MWAG for Media Workers. The workshop was held on Friday as part of the education process for local media practitioners leading up to the March 13th general elections. It attracted journalists from print, online and the television entities. Acting Supervisor of Elections, Alex Phillip, says the workshop also focused on the important role the media has to play in highlighting other events like Nomination Day. What we really and truly shared with the media were their concerns as to the usage of the facility for the final well, not the final, but the preliminary results, the night of preliminary results and the method that we'll be using um, as we go into the 2018 elections. We also shared about where we are presently in terms of our preparation and uh, uh, the many questions as to registration and uh, the various constituencies and so forth. And we are very, always very happy to share. President of the Media Workers Association, Kern Mason, is confident that reporters are now ready to provide fair and balanced coverage on before and after Election Day on March 13th. It was very encouraging to see a lot of the young journalists here and uh, they, they were asking questions for probably almost an hour and uh, the, representatives, the representatives, they were eager to answer the questions, which is very good. And um, it seems like they are ready and uh, um, moving forward I know that they will be able to maintain composure and um, report fair, balanced and accurate when it comes to elections coverage. Participant and second vice president of MWAG, Deroy Louison, says the session was a timely one that prepares journalists to embrace technology, which is the new media. The session was a very informative one. It's very important for us as media personnel to know um, the do's and the don'ts and um, what exactly will be happening um, 
as it relates to the, the electoral process. So um, we applaud the electoral office for taking the initiative to come and speak to us media people. The level at which we've um, included technology, the, the, the um, improving technology in this process, because I think we have to keep up with the times, um, not just as a media, but as a society, because new media is a part of us right now. So we have to make full use of it. This is the National Report, more news after the break. Guys, if I ask you what you think is the most deadly or the most dangerous creature on this planet, what are you going to say? A shark. A shark. A lion. A lion. If I tell you it's a mosquito, what do you guess? A mosquito. A mosquito. It is a mosquito. Mosquito bites result in the deaths of more than one million people every year. Thriving in humid and damp areas, mosquitoes reproduce quickly. The females lay their eggs in water and water holding containers. When the pupa changes into adults, they leave the water and become free-flying, biting insects. These biting pests can carry a number of diseases. Once you have a mosquito problem, check out your surroundings. It means that the mosquito breeding source is near your home. It is almost impossible to get rid of mosquitoes entirely. However, we can all play our part in controlling the mosquito population. Mosquito control is not solely the responsibility of the Ministry of Health, but it's also the responsibility of every member of the community. Recognizing the dangers to the environment and the long-term cost to the country, importers of non-biodegradable disposable products are giving their support to a cabinet decision to ban these products. Jerry Malcolm reports on a recent meeting attended by many of these importers. We are very concerned about what is happening with the landfill and the cost to Grenadians across the board as it becomes bigger. A concern which has led to a cabinet decision to ban non-biodegradable disposable products. Products which have been proven harmful to the environment and human health. A meeting was convened recently between importers of these items and the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment. The importers recommend an incremental approach. So while we have, for example, if I could share with you, the ban on importation proposed is for the following products styrofoam food containers, plastic shopping bags, the single-use bags, disposable plastic plates, spoons and forks, and the VAT arrangement and also the CSC arrangements are being discussed. So far, it's a, it was a very good meeting and I hope that we can continue the discussion because consultation is a very important part in order to implement any policy or or legislation on the island. Sixteen importers attended the meeting, all in favor of the ban. We started realizing how hazardous plastics is are to the environment. This, this drastic change will affect almost three-quarters of the company's income, but it's something that we need to do. The move from non-biodegradable to biodegradable products have financial implications for consumers as well. But the overall long-term cost is expected to be much less. From last year to this year, on one specific item, the price initially was 500% more than before. And now we brought it down to about 300%, three times more. And there is already, by not only negotiating with the suppliers, with constant innovation, the prices are coming down because the entire world is moving in that direction. Right. These things have been shown very clearly to have a serious impact on our food webs, on our bodies, um, both directly as well as indirectly. And therefore, um, the point is we have to make the move. This policy, in terms of um, recommendations to address harmful effects of non-biodegradable products on the environment, is not only an environment discussion. It goes also to our fisheries products, our, the revenue we collect from fisheries, how we protect our marine environment, how we believe a country that is healthy. 
The newly crowned Carrie Koo Carnival Queen says she is ready to represent the Sister Isle on the big stage for Spice Mass Festival in August. Miss Lauriston Crystal Nichols copped the title at the Carrie Koo Carnival Queen Show on Thursday night. She gave an impressive showing by also copying individual titles like Best Interview as well as Best Introduction, tying with Miss Rihanna Batiste. She also shares the Best Evening Wear title with Miss Bouchajou, Rihanna Batiste, and Miss Grenade. Sabrina George. The feeling is very great. I'm very overwhelmed. Trust me, I am. <laughs> yeah. How much are you now looking forward to representing Karaku and Pretty Matnik at Spice Mass 2018? Well, I will be coming full hundred. So let Grenada prepare. Miss Laurel Hippolyte is the first runner-up and Rihanna Batiste the second runner-up. Now to recap the headlines. More scholarship opportunities for Grenadians. And that's the National Report. I am Rakesha St. Louis.